good evening. My name is Andrew DeStefano. This is Putnam County Crime Analysis by way of John Jay College of Criminal Justice. My video today is on South American gangs in Putnam County, question mark. More specifically, the gang I'm focusing on is Tren de Aragua in Venezuela. Tren de Aragua translates literally to the Aragua train. Aragua is a state in Venezuela. And the gang itself comes from a prison gang in the Tocaron prison, the Tocaron province of Venezuela. And the gang itself was formed in about uh, 2010, has about 5,000 or so members. Its leader is a man named El Nino, El Nino Figueroa, who has a currently, he's on the run, supposedly, has a $12 million bounty on his head uh, by the United States. <clears throat> the prison itself is um, uh, quite a quite a feat. Um, sometime in around 2017, 2018, the Venezuelan government decided to be woke and they were going to try to find the good side of people that don't have a good side. And what they did was they allowed this gang to essentially take over a prison. They took over the Tocaron prison. They built, El Nino built uh, a zoo. He built a swimming pool. He built stores. He built uh, recreation areas and family areas for him and his and his top people. Um, turns out that the gang did nothing but flourish and started giving orders to people outside the prison. And hence, a lot of them came here to, to the United States. Didn't work out too well. Their crimes of choice are human trafficking, extortion, burglary, and assault. Sometime around April 2024, I started looking into this gang. And, you know, for school purposes, I could find nothing on it. Now, you see it all over the place. As I said, um, it was on, uh, it was in the news uh, a few days ago for taking over a housing complex and a number of buildings in the city of Denver, which is not a small place. And yet they took over this, um, these housing complex, walking around the hallways with automatic weapons. So now there's plenty of information on um, Tren de Aragua. The popular theory is that Venezuela opened up their prisons and then allowed the people to come here. That's not exactly 100% true. Essentially, their crime of choice has always been extortion. Their economy in Venezuela has tanked. And the crime of extortion, there's nobody left to extort. So... On that end, they've come here to try to commit the crimes of extortion, thinking that there's more money, there's more opportunity. Because when there's no money, they can't extort people. That's why they that's why they came here. They didn't exactly open up the prisons and let them come. Now, the tattoo is a skull with a gas mask and an AK-47. And they usually wear a number 23 Michael Jordan basketball shirt. 23 signifying the, the September 23rd, the birthday of Tren de Aragua. Um, ju last July 11th, the the Biden administration, or as the DOJ now says, the Biden-Harris administration, that's odd, um, has declared Tren de Aragua a transnational criminal organization, which would be nice if it was more established, but it really does, it's, it's on paper basically, but it really does absolutely nothing. It enables, it, 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 it gives more resources. It enables the government to spend more resources against Tren de Aragua. That's good. However, it also enables us to do things that we can't do. We'll, um, we can seize their assets. We can seize their property. They don't have any established assets. They don't have any established property. Not that I can see. I don't see anything that they've ever seized. But it's on paper. It's, it's something that uh, it's a tool in the toolbox. It should be used when they can. Uh, in 2005, the FBI set up the National Gang Intel Center. And by way of that, you have task forces. And a task force essentially is when you have a crime that covers several jurisdictions. It's cross-jurisdictional. That's when you set up a task force of various uh, agencies. So like you have the DEA task force, um, you have the bank robbery task force. Well, they have that task force in... Um, they have that task force in the city, 
and it's um it's one of those uh 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 it's a it's a like a like a gang task force here in Putnam County in this area it would be the Hudson Valley um gang task force and that's where local police departments would go and get their uh get their information get their information downloads um the federal powers um usually in those task forces if you're a part of it they get granted to local police departments, which enables you to do financial analysis, enables you to do Title III wiretaps. Um, it basically allows you to attack the gang from uh, what's called the enterprise theory of um, of investigation. It avoids uh, uh, duplicative work, essentially. So the police and the, sh and the sheriff's uh, departments all throughout the state, they know so little about Tren de Aragua because... Every crime that gets committed, and it's they can trace it to what appears to be a South American gang. Um, it's uh, it's if they keep calling it Tren de Aragua, and they keep attributing various crimes to Tren de Aragua, but it's not really Tren de Aragua. It might be, and it might not. Uh, but the media keeps uh, keeps attributing uh, these crimes to Tren de Aragua, and they really don't know that for a fact. Now, what concerns me is that Putnam County is 60 miles north of New York City, and Tren de Aragua has an established foothold in the city. And not only do they have an established foothold in New York City, their rents are being paid by the taxpayers. They're, they're living in like five-star hotels. They're eating for free. Um, and not only are they 60 miles north of New York City, but they're 20 miles, they're 20 miles um, west of Danbury. And Danbury apparently has an established presence of South American gangs in general, Tren de Aragua specifically. Um, they're already, so last Sunday, they already had, um, uh, there were several cases of what they believe to be South American gangs hitting the Danbury Mall. Uh, five different stores, five different times. And when they give their addresses, it's migrant shelters in New York City. So, um, you know, what is what does that tell you? Uh, that means they're up here. That means they're up here and they're making their way here. Right. It's not a question of if it's a question of when the bad news for Putnam County is that. Their signature crime, besides extortion, has always been human trafficking. Human trafficking is controlled by the cartels. And they're not going to give they're not going to give any any slice of the pie to Tren de Aragua or anybody else. So. Tren de Aragua is going to have to be more focused on more uh, domestic type of crimes, burglaries, assaults, cell phone robberies, very big. And that's what and what I'm describing is generally Putnam County, a Putnam County area. You know, lots of private homes, um, lots of uh, open space, very easy for them to operate up here. So <clears throat> the. If they can survive in, in Tokaron prison, if they're up here, if they can survive in a place called Tokaron prison, I mean, this place is, is, is vicious. It's not only has all these nice amenities, but it's its own little government. It's its own little uh, justice system. They have, uh, if uh, there's a dispute, they can clear it all out and they have the yard and they have, just like in the Roman legions, and they have everyone surrounding the yard and the two combatants come to the middle and they fight to the death. And this is 2024, and this is what's going on in Tokaron Prison with Tren de Aragua. This is how they're trained. Those people that are surviving that are coming here. You think they're afraid of Rikers Island? You think they're afraid of Putnam County Jail? Or they're afraid of local police? Um, I don't think so. So it's uh, it's very concerning. The methods are uh, motorbikes. Uh, they're on lots of videos in New York City. I mean, they're just driving up on a motorbike. They jump off, they smash you, they grab you, they take your cell phone. And it's interesting, they take your cell phone and they keep tapping it and tapping it every few seconds to keep it open. Then within you know a few minutes, they have somebody standing by, they hand that person the cell phone, and then that person has the knowledge to clean out your bank accounts in just a few minutes. And it has happened. It has happened many times in uh, New York City. I've spoken to guys uh, who, who work those cases. It's a, it's a, it's a thing. I mean, these guys are very good at what they do. Um, 
law enforcement needs to be prepared for the inevitable. However, what I'm afraid of is something that I've always encountered up here. Whenever I tried to bring something forward, I tried to say something, I was always encountered what we call the big lie. We do that already. No, 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 no. That we no, we already know about that. We got a handle on it already. We've been doing that for a long time, Andy. Where you been? You know, I remember talking about data-driven policing. I remember talking about Comstat. We do that. We do it every morning. We do it every morning at our staff meeting. You know, <laughs> 15 years later, I'm still waiting for data-driven policing. Um, but yeah, that's so my my concern when it comes to South American gangs and your concern should be what I call the big lie. We do that already. That's the big lie. We do that already. No, you don't. No, you don't. My my favorite is we're already doing it. I've heard that a million times. So now <clears throat> to make inroads into addressing this new phenomenon in Putnam County, we have got to think outside the box. And what does outside the box mean in this situation? It means reaching out to the community in Brewster and trying to establish communication and relationships with these people that are already living here. These guys come here from Guatemala. They work. They work hard. They work. A lot of them work seven days a week, getting money to send it back to their family in Guatemala. They're not doing robberies. They're not doing burglaries. They're not doing any of these things. But what's going to happen is when Tren de Aragua, all these other South American gangs come up here, they're not going to hide in Cold Spring. They're not going to hide in Kent. They're going to try to hide in the village of Brewster, and they're going to try to blend in, and they're going to claim that they're Guatemalans. And for us, you know, cross-cultural uh, confusion, we're not going to know the difference. We're not going to know the difference. But Guatemalans will know. The people living there will know. We need to establish that communication. And right now, what I would like to see is if we were already talking to people, in the village of Brewster. But again, we're going to get the big lie, you know? No, no, we, I, I know a guy. We, we know a guy in the village. We're talking to a guy who's talking to a guy who's talking to a guy who knows a guy who spoke to a guy who met a guy who got information from a guy. Don't worry about it. We're doing that already. The big lie. Um, when was the last time there was a public meeting for resident of the village of Brewster, asking them, listen, we need your help. You appeal to these people, they will help you. Believe me, they will. And that's what, I mean, that's how, that's how desperate a situation it is because this is an anonymous community. It's going to come up here and they're going to start hammering us. So without further ado, I'm going to address the, the community in the village of Brewster in their native tongue and Hopefully it would be, I would, I'm going to show this video to several and hopefully some relationship can be established. You can laugh all you want, but unless you can do better, that's what my father always taught me. Don't laugh at somebody unless you can do better and you can't. Señoras y señores, mi nombre es Andrew De Stefano. Este, esta llamada es el problema que sabemos de, 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 uh, Bandas y pantillas de América del Sur, que se, específicamente la banda y, y la pandilla se llama Tren de Aragua de Venezuela. Sabemos de la noticia que, que hay mucho, ellos están causando mucha, mucha violencia, mucho, mucho problema, mucho roba en la calle, mucho roba de celular, mucho roba de, de la gente, uh, mucho vende droga y tal vez ellos están todavía ya están en, 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 en la ciudad de Danbury. Y cuando ellos vienen aquí, en nuestra cantidad, ellos van a venir. Ellos van a tratar de fingir a ser guatemalteco. Ellos no son guatemalteco. Cuando vienen, ellos van a es, esconder en, en el pueblo de, de Brewster. Y cuando vienen, ellos van a fingir a ser guatemalteco. Ellos no son guatemalteco. Guatemalteco son gente buena. No estoy diciendo que uh, venezolanos son, son malos. Estoy diciendo que Tren de Aragua son de Venezuela. Tren de Aragua es malo. La cosa que está haciendo es malo. Cuando ellos vienen, van, vamos a necesitar tu ayuda. 
Ojalá y espero que eso es la primera vez, la primera oportunidad a abrir una puerta con la comunidad hispana en el condado de Brusta. Muy pronto vamos a, vamos a hablar, muy pronto tal vez vamos a tener junta y podemos información que tú sabemos. Okay. Mucho gusto y Dios te bendiga. All right. So I address them. I address people that are Spanish speaking. Should have been done a long time ago. I'm sure. We, we've been doing that already, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. So hopefully we can get things done. Hopefully, you know, we all have a stake here. We all have a stake. You know, if, if you own a house, you own property, you have family all here in Putnam County. We're all in this together. These gangs are coming up here and we're going to either have to deal with it or we're going to have to face the consequences. But proactivity is the key. And I think it's time that we started, you know, maybe being a little proactive in this area. Um, I, I know we're already doing it. I know. I know uh, we've been doing that already. I know. I know. But I think that we really need to start doing it. Um That's the first video I'm making on Tren de Aragua. There's going to be follow-ups because uh, I have several videos of uh, local crimes they've committed. Not local here in Putnam, local in the city. And I'll post them. In any event, my name is Andrew DiStefano. This is Putnam County Crime Analysis by way of John Jay College of Criminal Justice. God bless. Have a great day.